Hi, in this video I'm going to explain how to record vendor invoices on SAP S4HANA. I'm going to add some insights to the process and at the end of the video I'm going to add some configuration tips. This video is going to cover posting a supplier invoice without reference to a purchase order. And I'm going to explain this in four steps. First, I'm going to post one very simple invoice so you can actually see the result of this transaction. Then I'm going to explain the business case. When do we actually use this transaction in real life? After that, I'm going to post another invoice, but this time I'm going to mention some additional fields and eventually I'm going to show some configuration steps. So how do we post a supplier invoice without reference to a purchase order? You use the transaction create incoming invoices. You can also find it in the application finder. Under accounts payable invoices, create incoming invoices. So click on this transaction. You can use any vendor account for this exercise. So I'm going to use this one, SUP. SUPL2 invoice date you can mention today's date so this will be October 2nd 2018 and for the amount this is the amount of the invoice so I'm going to mention 1000 this is the currency USD and the reference is going to be the vendor invoice number one to any random one GL account I'm going to use an expense account that is used for any uh, utilities. So I'm going to check this one, six. This one is okay. Amount is also 1000. Tax I0, this is 0% tax code. This field is only for USA, but since we are using an example uh, with a model company that is in USA, then you have to fill this field. So I'm going to use this value here. Then you also have to mention a cost assignment since this is an expense account. So for the cost assignment, go to the right. We have cost center and internal order. We can mention either of them. So I'm going to choose a cost center. And I'm working with company code 1710 and all the cost centers start with the same coding. So I'm going to pick the financial zone. This. Now I'm going to press enter. And SAP will do a quick check to make sure that you didn't miss any important fields. If you check up here, you are going to find a green sign, which means that the entry is okay. Now I'm going to post, click on post. Now you can go to this menu, click on document, display, and this AP will display the last document that you posted. So this is our document, and this is the financial entry. So as you see, the result is SAP will post a debit to the PNL account, to the expense account, and it will post a credit to the vendor account. So when do we actually use this transaction in real life? We usually use it for invoices that have no purchase order, such as utilities, office supplies, or any scenario that you can imagine in your business. We can also use it to adjust the vendor accounts, to post a credit to the vendor account against any GL account of our choice, and this has multiple uses based on the business scenarios also. So this is the business case. Now I'm going to post another invoice, but this time I'm going to mention some additional details. So here we have the vendor account number, and in my example I'm using SUPL2, this one. Then we have the invoice date and the posting date. What is the difference between them? The invoice date is the actual date written on the invoice that you received from your vendor, which is the date of issuance of the invoice. The posting date is the date that you actually posted the invoice in your system. They are usually the same, but it happens that they can be different. So for example, if the vendor issued the invoice yesterday, so I would say 10 slash 01 slash 2018, 
and it took them one day to send the actual invoice to us, then these dates can be different. The posting date is the actual date reflected in your uh, trial balance and in your financial statements. So this is the actual financial date. The invoice date is only used for reference. So you can actually know when the invoice was issued from the vendor side. Then we have the reference field. Here we, you can mention any details you want, but usually we insert the vendor invoice number. Since the vendor invoice is an external document, and there is no reference in our system on the number of this document and it is very important to the audit and very important to the accountants to know the original document that we actually posted here so we always mention the vendor invoice number that is mentioned on the paper invoice so in my case I'm going to use for example INV and any numbers then we have the amount field so this is the actual amount I'm going to pay to the vendor. So in my case, it is 1000 and we have the currency field. So the currency comes by default as USD because this is what we maintained in the vendor master record, but you can change it manually. So for example, if this invoice is actually in another currency, such as euros, you can remove this value and insert EUR. And SAP will translate the currency from EUR to your local currency based on the foreign exchange rates that you maintained in the system. There is another screen where we can maintain the exchange rates. And whenever you want to display this document or to display your trial balance, you can actually display all the transactions in the transaction currency, which is EUR, and you can also display it in your local currency. In my example, it is USD, and you can also display it in multiple other currencies based on your setup. Then we have the tax information. So here you can mention the tax code. The tax codes reflect the tax percentage based on your setup. So you can have, for example, 2% taxes, 5%, 10%. This is the value added tax or the sales tax. In my example, I'm going to use 0%, which is I0. And then if I click on this field, on this checkbox, then I'm telling SAP that I want the system to calculate the taxes automatically. So for example, if the taxes were 10% and you click on this field, then SAP will calculate the 10% automatically from the 1000 invoice amount. But you can also not check this one and you can insert the tax amount manually. It all depends on how you would like to process your invoice. Then we have the text field and here you can mention any text for your reference. So for example, test case one and this is all for the basic data tab now on the right side you can also see the vendor information so you have the vendor address the vendor name and you can also click on this to display the vendor master record where you can check any field in the master record that you want and you can check on this one to display all the open items of the vendor open items are all the invoices that are recorded on the vendor account that we did not pay yet now I'm going to move to the other tab, which is payment. So this tab includes the payment information, which is our agreement with the vendor on how we are going to pay the invoices. So here we have the payment term and the payment term is our agreement on how long it should take us to pay the vendor invoice. So for example, you can say that we are going to pay the invoice within one week or we are going to pay the invoice immediately or within one month. You can also have different levels of agreement. You can say, if I pay within one week, then I get 2% discount. If I pay within two weeks, I get 1% discount. And if I pay within one month, then I get no discount at all. So in my case, I'm going to use, for example, 0003. Once I press enter, SAP is going to display the agreement information or the payment term information. So this one says that if I pay within 14 days, I get 3% discount. If I pay within 20 days, I get 2% discount. And if I pay within 30 days, then I get no discount at all. Now the baseline date is the date from which the payment term will be calculated. So here we are saying that we should pay within 30 days maximum and the 30 days would be counted from this day. And it comes by default from the invoice date or the posting date that we inserted in the basic data, but it can also be different. So for example, if we say that the vendor has actually given us 
an extra allowance of one week before we start counting the payment term you can actually change this date to make it 9th for example once you hit enter you can see the due date field being updated so the due date is calculated automatically based on the baseline date and the payment term so in our case we have the October 9th 2018 and the, the payment term is 30 days so the due date is November 8th 2018 and if you change these values and press enter you are going to find the due date being changed and you can actually change the payment term information manually here so for example if I say that in this invoice I agreed with the vendor that the discount will be 4% instead of 3 you can actually change this value and make it 4 based on the business scenario you have and this discount will be reflected when you do the outgoing payments so when you are actually posting the payments in SAP it will automatically take into consideration the payment term discount which is a very good function in SAP then we have the payment methods this is how you plan to pay to your vendor it can be by bank transfer it can be by check it can be by cash and it has different configuration aspects I'm not going to discuss this in this video because this would be too much now all the information we entered so far is related to the vendor side which is the credit side in our financial entry now for the debit side we should mention a GL account so this can be a P&L account such as an expense and it can also be a balance sheet account it all depends on the business scenario so in my case my example is I am paying for utilities so I'm going to choose this GL account this one and then the amount is the amount of the GL account why do we have an amount field here and another amount field in the basic data the one in the basic data is the total invoice amount that you are going to pay to the vendor but the one that we have here is for this line item which means that for the same vendor I can be paying for multiple services so in this case I would have multiple line items so for example I would have one GL account two GL accounts three GL accounts and the amount that I'm going to pay to the vendor is actually split between these line items in my example I only have one line item so this will be the 1000 euros that we mentioned in the basic data and then the tax code comes automatically from their basic data tab which is I0 then we have this field this field is only related to USA and since we are using an example company code that is created in US so we have to fill this field but you don't have to worry about it so I'm going to mention CA000 and then we also have to mention a cost object because here we are using an expense account and whenever you use an expense account in SAP you have to mention a cost object that is responsible for this expense and this is very important for the managerial accounting reports so you can always know why we are paying these expenses so in my case I'm going to use a cost center so I have to go to the right here and here's the cost center field so in my example I'm assuming that I'm being utilities for the financial department so I'm going to say 1710 and I'm going to select the financials cost center it can be anything based on the business scenario again now this is it for the financial entry now all I have to do is to press enter and the SAP will automatically check the financial entry to make sure that there are no errors and if you have any errors you are going to find a red mark here so for example if I say that I am paying the vendor 1000 euros but the line items are only for 900 euros and I hit enter then SAP will give you an error that there is a variance or a difference between the debits and the credits of 100 and you cannot post this financial entry so I'm going to make it 1000 again and now it is green now I can easily post this financial document but before I do let me mention some other functions so 
you can also hold the financial document holding a financial document means that you are going to work on it later for example I have a meeting now or I have to go right now so I didn't finish the financial entry but I'm not willing to start working on it from the scratch again next time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on hold and SAP will save this financial document for me to work on it later and no one has the right to check this financial document except my user ID because this is only a draft for me the other option we have is simulate and using this option you can simulate the financial entry without doing any postings so you can actually check that everything is okay so I'm going to click on this one and as you can see this is the document overview and it is saying that we have a debit of 1000 and we have a credit to the vendor of 1000 since everything is okay in the financial document I'm going to post so click on post this is it for the vendor invoice processing now I'm going to mention some configuration steps so for configuration I'm going to use SAB GUI here and to go to the configuration screens the transaction is SPRO enter then click on SAP reference IMG now the configuration for the vendor invoice without reference to a purchase order you can find in the financial accounting here under accounts receivable account payable business transactions incoming invoices and the credit memos and here you can check the different configuration items for the vendor invoice for any configuration step you can click on this to display the SAP help documentation and this will explain what this uh, configuration activity is used for and for example here you can maintain the payment terms so if you click on this these are the different payment terms available in the vendor invoice transaction if you click on anyone this is the configuration for the payment term that we used in our example so here is the payment discount and the number of days there are many other options that you can go and check and if you have any questions please let me know i would be happy to help thank you for watching my videos don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel like the facebook page follow me on linkedin and also help me by sharing the videos so other people can find them